Well, hello again. Welcome to session four. We are almost done, but we're so happy you are joining us once again. So we are Joyce, Tracy, and Caitlin coming at you from your home or wherever it is that you're watching us. And we pray that you are doing well, that you are getting a lot out of this study. Hopefully you're doing your homework and talking about it either with your Zoom group or just with the Lord. We hope that you are doing really great with this study. Um, so this session is called Session 4, But You, Beloved, and we're going to talk about some wonderful, wonderful things in this session. But before we do, I would like to ask Miss Joyce if she would pray for us. Heavenly Father, we just come to you in the name of Jesus. And Father, we thank you once again for this opportunity to gather together with our Flourish family, our, our, our Flourish sisterhood, Father God, that you've brought us together to hear your word, Father God, to grow in you, to become more Christ-like and walk in love. We pray, Father God, for your Holy Spirit just to fall upon us, to open our ears, open our eyes, open our hearts, open our minds, to hear what you have to say for us today, Father. We give you the praise and the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Jesus name. Amen. Well, yes, you are part of the Flourish Sisterhood. Welcome to the Flourish family. Whether you attend River of Life Fellowship or not, if you are watching us, we are calling you our sisters in Flourish. So Flourish is uh, River of Life's women's ministry. And uh, this is the first time that we have ventured out doing Bible study in this way, and we hope that you're enjoying it. Um, we don't know what the future is going to look like, but I have a feeling that online somehow is going to be part of the deal of going back into the church and, and gathering physically. But for now, here we are online, and we do hope that this is going really well for you. Um, before we start <laughs> this session, which I think is going to be like a breath of fresh air after the kind of the spiritual hammer that went down last week, um, Caitlin, I just want to ask you, um, how did you feel after we talked about session three, the things that we were kind of learning about those characters in the Bible? Um, I really felt like session three was really presenting us with the challenge that we are all facing today with what way culture is right now, with like we were discussing all the lawlessness that has been running abundantly and, and, and abound. Um, and But it was really good. It was encouraging because, again, like we said in the last session, where lawlessness abounds, grace abounds even more. So it was presenting us with the challenge. Um, really letting us identify, okay, what are some of those aspects that maybe I struggle with on the daily, like little things like discontentment or, you know, just easy things like that, that can really be such a, a slipping, tripping stone for us as believers. Um, so it presented that, but also reminded us of the grace that always abounds even more so when we're faced with these challenges. So it was encouraging. Yeah, yeah. good. I, I'm glad that you said that because we always have a choice as to how we're going to receive information or wisdom or knowledge we can we can take it in fear we can take it with anxiety or we can take it as a positive we can always learn and grow through the the trials that that are presenting themselves to us and really this this time in in our life in our history that is going on that is being made right now um, it is a trial, isn't it? What kind of what kind of testing do you think this is for the body of Christ, and and what do you think Christ wants out of this moment for us as his kids? Mm -hmm. Well, I think one of the biggest trials and challenges right now is is are, what are you standing on? You know, is your foundation firm on the Word of God, on trusting the Lord, or are you being caught up in all the voices? I mean, there's a zillion different voices out there mm -hmm. that you could attach yourself to, you know, but if you know the voice of God, you're going to stand strong in it. And so there's no more riding the fence, there's no more gray areas, either you're in with God or you're not. You know, and so the challenge, I loved, I loved what you said. Mm -hmm, yeah. um, the challenge is, okay, you know, are we going to walk out now what we truly believe? Are we going to be the Jesus with skin on it? Mm -hmm. Are we going to walk in love? Or are we going to cower down and hide and, yeah. or, or get tossed over mm -hmm. into the other side? You know, 
people don't like to feel odd. They don't like to feel weird, you know. Uh, but the Bible calls us peculiar people, you know. <laughs> <It's> true. <laughs> you know, uh, yeah, we are, you know. We, we don't fit the world system. Yeah. And so now it's just a time to stand strong for Jesus. Amen. Amen. So as you can see, I am surrounded by positivity. God's word is in abundance right here and so we're just praying that you receive what we have to to offer through the holy spirit today um okay so we're going to go ahead and take in breathe this nice fresh air talk about us as daughters of christ being the beloved of god and we're going to um, just do a couple of little verses this week we've only got three verses to to really pull apart um, so we're going to start with jude verse 20 taking it to uh, 23 okay so i'm going to just go ahead and read that but you beloved building yourselves up on your most holy faith praying in the holy spirit keeping yourselves in the love of god looking for the mercy of our lord jesus christ unto eternal life and on some have compassion making a distinction but others save with fear pulling them out of the fire hating even the garment defiled by the flesh he starts out this sentence, but you beloved. We talked all about those who will not live in eternity with Christ, but you beloved, you are going to spend an eternity with Christ. We are going to spend an eternity with Christ. So that's where we start today. Um, actually, I do this a lot. I don't know why I do this. I always I have a thought and I have to go with that first to just kind of complete that thing and then we can start on. So I want to talk about two different kinds of breath, two different kinds of breath that takes place within the body. Um, and this is part of this is like just a little trail of what was left from last week. So this kind of helps establish where we're going, okay? So this is just building a foundation for where we're going. So let me do this real quick, okay? Verse 19, where we left off last week, said, these are sensual persons who cause divisions, not having the spirit. We talked all about those people last week. We're gonna leave them there. And after this point, we're probably not gonna reference them again. Thank the Lord. Okay, so what I wanna point out here is the distinction between sensual persons, those who cause divisions, and uh, those who do not, those who have the spirit and those who do not have the spirit, okay? The word sensual is actually a word for breath, and the word spirit with the capital S is also a word for breath. It's like two sides of a coin. So the sensual breath is actually the, the physical breath that we share with animals it's the breath that everybody breathes we all have this mechanism that allows us to draw in air and that's it that's the only place where that goes um, as a definition just so you can um, understand it a little bit better so in the greek it's sukikos meaning having the nature of the characteristic of breath the principle of animal life okay um, the sensuous nature uh, relating only to the senses uh, with its subjection to appetite and passion. So animal nature, emotional nature, carnal and fleshly breath, okay? The spirit, which is also breath, and a lot of you may know this word in the Greek is pneuma, and this is defined as the disposition or influence which fills and governs the soul. It's referred to in a way that emphasizes the personality and the character of the Holy Spirit. And actually, in Strong's Concordance, it says it is never referred to as a depersonalized force. So I just thought that that was such an interesting picture that we can have the two sides of breath. There's that natural breath, which everybody has, but then there's a breath of God that fills his children and when we believe in the regenerating breath of god breathed into us when we have that salvation experience we're then able to be all that god has created us to be if we're only breathing that natural breath there's there's a side to life that we're not even able to inhale 
and exhale out. So we're going to talk about the breath of God um, helping us to build our faith. And this is why we're called his beloved, because he has breathed into us that new breath, that pneuma breath that we're able to operate by. Okay. So it's really important that we undergo the transformation of allowing God to breathe into us. And um, I'm going to go ahead and let's see. Paul's starting to... I'm going to go ahead and just read, reread verse 20. But you, beloved, building yourselves up on your most holy faith. I'm going to stop there. But you, beloved, you, daughter of God, you who is worthy of love. This is what this word beloved means. You who are highly esteemed, you who is just the apple of God's eye, you beloved, you build yourself up on your most holy faith. I want to, I circled the words you in this sentence because there's, there is a finger point now, but it's a good one. You build yourself up on your most holy faith. The word does not say we will build ourselves up on God's holy faith, even though we need the faith of God to do his works. But in this, in this way, we are encouraged to look inward and to see how we can add to the kingdom of God by doing what he's called us to do, encouraging ourselves in his word so that we can be active members in the kingdom, in God's family. You know, when you think of being a child of God, what, what, kind, of, what kind of feelings come with, with your revelation of, of that knowledge? How do you view yourself as a, as a daughter of, of God? Um, <clears throat> loved, loved unconditionally. Um, you know, it's a love that a human being isn't capable of on mm -hmm. their own. They have to go through the Holy Spirit, but just knowing that he's never going to leave me, he's never going to forsake me, you know, that um, uh, he has sacrificed, you know, God has sacrificed his only son. I, I only have one son and one daughter. I mean, I mean, I love people, but I can't say I would sacrifice either one of them for anybody else. I, I'd like to think I would, but, but he did, you know, and he would have done that if it was just me or if it was just one of you, you know, but he did it for all of mankind. And for people to reject that is, is heartbreaking to me. Um, it must be terribly heartbreaking to him. But, but he, you know, if you're a child of his, you know, he's going to guard you. He's going to guide you. He's going to give you everything we need. And, you know, we shouldn't worry. You know, we shouldn't worry. You know, if you know where you're going, you know, your heavenly home, mm -hmm. you know, um, your royalty. You know, you have the privileges of, of heaven. Yeah. You just need to... Trust that, to believe it, and to walk in it. I think that's the hardest part sometimes for, um, especially women, to, to have that view that we're royalty. We certainly don't feel like royalty. We often don't feel like we look like royalty. So can, can you talk about that a little bit, Caitlin? How, how do you put on that identity of being royalty in God's kingdom? Well, it's so funny that you asked me that because as Joyce was talking, I was sitting there thinking, yeah, I struggle with identifying as the royalty <laughs> aspect of it, actually. Um, <laughs> because, um, you know, first and foremost, as a Christian, we always view ourselves as trying to be humble servants of God, right? Mm -hmm. um, and then society also makes it difficult for us to feel worthy and mm -hmm. loved and cherished and um, beautiful and all these things that God sees us as. And so it's really a struggle of, um, maybe it's just part of, you know, how different people are raised too. With me personally, it was kind of like, you know, don't think too highly of yourself because mm -hmm. then you may lose your humility and then you become prideful and boastful and God doesn't want that. Yeah. Um, so I guess uh, for me, in terms of how do I identify as part of royalty, as part of the heavenly kingdom, is um, more in my prayer life. Mm. Uh, when it comes to praying for someone, when it, especially when it comes to intercessory prayer, 
um, putting on the identity of, of heavenly royalty really gives me more of the power in my prayer life to not feel like, oh, I'm not worthy. God's not going to hear my prayers. God's not going to, you know, necessarily answer me. Um, it's like, no, I am a beloved daughter of God. Yeah. If it was, if I was the only one, he still would have, like Joy said, sacrificed his son just for me. He does want to hear every prayer and supplication that I have, even the smallest ones. And so that gives me more confidence in my prayer walk and in my faith walk as well, mm -hmm. knowing that, well, I don't always identify when I look in the mirror <laughs> as royalty, um, but spiritually, I try and put more emphasis on that in how I operate through my faith. Yes. Yeah. Um, and then if I'm ever discouraged, I just think to myself, okay, Caitlin, just straighten your crown and keep walking <laughs> forward. <laughs> so We do all have crowns, by the way. You just can't see them. Yeah. So <laughs> I think about how Jesus must have just walked through the crowds and some people could recognize his authority because of the power that he, that there was to heal we they saw his miracles and but he still was walking as a regular man he was not walking the streets in his glory he wasn't even walking the streets in the glory of an earthly king so people didn't regard that about him but you know, as, as we're walking along in our daily lives, if, if we can think of actively putting on that garment of Christ, you know, even though, the, even though people cannot recognize that, if you know that you're wearing that garment, you are empowered with the Holy Spirit to do what he's called you to do, to pray for people as he leads you to pray. I think that's such a, a beautiful way of identifying with your your royal lineage in that when you pray, you are confident knowing that God is going to hear you because mm -hmm. you are his daughter. Amen. <laughs> Her eyes are like tearing up a little bit. I love it. Because <laughs> you know what? We're, we're talking about our Savior. We're talking about our King. And this is a God that loves us and that we love. And I have a feeling that you can kind of feel that through the screen. You know, that love is really emanating. Um, because we have had these real experiences mm -hmm. with our Lord. And we pray that for each one of you, you have these personal revelations of God's love for you, his deep abounding love that will go to any depth, any length, any place to reach you. We've talked about that. So let's see how Jude wants us to continue to maintain our life with God. Okay, so... Um, we're to build ourselves up on our faith, not anybody else's faith, our faith. And we get faith through the training of the word, through allowing God to, to be God in our situations. And maybe that means we have to step out in fear or, or doing things that we don't necessarily want to do. Do you ever feel like sometimes you maybe you know that you have to do something but you don't really want to do it and then all of these doors kind of close and you've only got one <laughs> one avenue to take and you have nothing you have no say about it do, do you guys understand what I'm talking about okay so they, they understand and you know for your own situation what that might be but um, uh, just a quick story before we moved to Washington uh, my husband and I we lived in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, and we were very involved with church and, and the ministry, and we had no intention of um, uprooting ourselves. We, we loved where we were and, and serving, and um, I happened to be eight months pregnant with uh, our second child, and Jim had just gotten laid off from a job. Uh, I was about to lose my insurance because we had insurance through my job, and I was going to be part-time. Our, we were renting at the time, so our landlord, just at, at that exact moment, said, well, you have, to, you have to buy the house or move out. <laughs> so no job, no insurance, no house. We had nothing left to do but pray and say, okay, God, we didn't see this coming. And he opened a door that allowed us to come here, and it was miraculous the way he provided for us to be here. What could only be attested to God. So 
I'm sure as you look back on your life, you'll you'll be able to to see where God's hand was kind of moving you, giving you no other choice but to trust him. And so as you have these experiences with God, he is building up your faith. And that's why the three of us can sit here today and be confident knowing that God is indeed doing a new thing through all of us, through every single woman who is hearing this study and going through it. He wants to build us up. Um, he wants us to build ourselves up in our, in our holy faith. So as we're doing that, he also says, Jude says, to keep yourselves, keep ourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. This word keep is again the word that is used in the beginning of Jude. We talked about those who are preserved in Christ. It's the same word, which means this loving, this, this loving care, just this very doting um, care over something that's very delicate and very precious. We're supposed to keep ourselves. We're supposed to care for ourselves this way. In the love of God, not the love of that we have for God, but the love that he has toward us. There's, there's definitely a difference. Our love will, will fall short. Our, our love will um, not meet everybody's expectations. And so if we were a car and we were full of some kind of love fuel, if, if we had our own love fuel going on, it would run out. But God's love that has been shed abroad in our hearts, it's just never ending. So if, if we kind of look at ourselves that way, is that open vessel that's ready to receive God's love, then we can pour out to others. Amen. 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 Okay, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ. Um, you know, watchmen on the walls of a city, like in, in the ancient um, in the ancient history texts, uh, they had walled cities so invaders couldn't come in, couldn't just you know, wreak havoc, take the spoils, and, and ruin their cities. Um, these watchmen on the walls, they were always looking for trouble. They were always looking for any first sign of danger. And so if we, but if we're looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ, we're kind of in that same active stance. We never stop looking for God's mercy to be poured out on somebody. So this is how we can say that we're operating in God's love. When people persecute you, as Jesus said, pray for them. We can do that because we're looking for the mercy of Jesus Christ to be on them. If we're full of God's love, it's going to be easy to look for the mercy that should be going out to people because then we're operating through Christ. Uh, one of my favorite verses in the Bible is Philippians 4, 8. And um, I want to just read it in its entirety because it's just, it's lovely. Y'all probably know it. Whatever is good. Whatever. Remember? Okay, so, but let me read it, okay? Okay, finally, brethren, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there is any virtue and if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. The things which you learned and received and heard and saw in me, in Paul, these do, and the peace of God will be with you. Let's please, in this, in this time that we find ourselves in, this cr it's crazy, <laughs> it's crazy. In this crazy time that we find ourselves in, let us be Philippians 4, 8 women. Let us look to what is good. Let us be active in looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ in this way. And if we do, there is nothing that is going to stop us. We are going to be an unstoppable force. Princesses everywhere, just wielding <laughs> swords <laughs> in the spirit. Okay, we want to walk free and untainted you know, we don't want to wear those dyed garments that we talked about last week. We don't want bitterness to be defiling us and defiling other people. We want to be active and engaged in our faith. And so I want you to kind of take note of how many verbs are just in that first, well, the first two verses. 
okay? Building ourselves up, praying in the Holy Spirit, keeping ourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy. I mean, how active is our faith supposed to be? Extremely. (laughs) But isn't it funny how then there's the other part of it where we're supposed to rest in God. We're supposed to rest in God and not rely on our works, but then we're supposed to be active on our faith. You know, the Bible is just, it abounds in so many of these kinds of contrasts that if we're not able to to study the word, sometimes it looks like it's contradictory, but it's not. So if you come across things that just don't, you know, don't make sense or don't click, this is why we need to study the word because there is a rest in God. And when we are doing what we're supposed to be doing and God is doing what he can do, what he can only do, then we can rest. You know, that faith can sit and be because we've done all the things that we're supposed to do. So our faith is not a passive faith, okay? Please remember that. We're building, we're praying, we're preserving, we're looking. Faith, yes, it is a noun, but let's make it a verb. We're gonna be faithing, (laughs) okay? All right. Um, So verses 22, Okay, so verse, verse 22 and 23, we're, we're already on halfway done here. Okay, so now we're talking about, the first part was how we're living our lives before God. This next verse, 22 and 23, these verses are talking about how we're supposed to have an effect on others. So this is the, the outward expression. And on some, have compassion, making a distinction. But others save with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garment defiled by the flesh. We've talked a lot about garments and a a lot about uh, the tainting of those garments. Um, The gospel is a one size, beautifully fits all garment. It fits everybody, anytime. It doesn't matter how much you've eaten. (laughs) or not it doesn't matter because it's going to fit it was designed to fit every single person salvation is is a one size fits all um, garment but the thing that we're talking about here what Jude is doing is showing us that there are different ways it's customizable the way that we reach out to people there are a myriad of ways that we can customize that that message so that others will receive it. So this is what he's talking about. The method by which we communicate can be designed to to fit exactly the person that God has led into your life. Um, Joyce, can can you think of maybe some different examples of different ways that you've had to, you've had opportunity to speak with people about who Christ is? Different way, you mean one-on-one? Or? Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> mm-hmm. Oh yeah, after, after almost 38 years in ministry, <laughs> yeah, I, I think I've pretty much seen it all <laughs> and I heard it all and, 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 and that's a point, you know? Mm-hmm. I mean, we're all in this together, you know? there's. God doesn't love one person more than another, you know, doesn't love the most, the nuns, you know, <laughs> any more than, than the prostitutes, you know, he, he caused his son to die and sacrifice his son for that prostitute or that nun and all of us in between, you know, mm-hmm. he, he's, he's a great God and, and when we can comprehend, I, I, we'll never comprehend until we're in heaven, so don't get me wrong, mm-hmm. you know, because it's a daily learning of how much God loves us. Because we'll like take a couple steps and then then we'll do something stupid and think, oh gosh, how could he love me? You know, <laughs> you know. And we have to pick ourselves back up, but that's a key. You just pick yourselves back up. You know, when you get inside of you, how much God loves you. You know, um, back to the royalty. You know, I I think I, you know, I love Disney. I love Cinderella. It's my all, all time favorite. <laughs> you know, but you think of Cinderella and you think of this perfect person. You know, everything's perfect about her. You know, and. Um, that's not what we're talking about. We're not talking about, you know, the riches and, you know, all the kings and queens that we see on earth. It's, it's, you know, we are part, we're the daughter of the king of kings. There's no kings above him. And, 
so it's a different kind of royalty than I think what a lot, and that's I think that's where some people stumble, mm -hmm. you know, because yeah. um, we get this this worldly view of of uh, all the riches and driving Lamborghinis and all, mm -hmm. and that's not mm -hmm. what we're talking about, you know. Yeah. God can give them to you, but that doesn't that doesn't make you royalty, yeah. you know, yeah. of the Christian royalty. So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of it you have to just be. Who you know who you are, you know. I know when we first went in the ministry, I was totally confident God could do it. But uh, Tracy was just asking me how I got saved first, and and um, and Jack was out of work. You know, he had to be. He, and it, well, long story, but and my mom had just died, so uh, uh, my whole world had crashed on me big time. Just had a baby, and I pray that Jack would get a job and and that he would get saved, actually saved, and then a job. And, I was just telling her I, I, I didn't pray specifically what kind of job. <laughs> I wasn't intended to go in the ministry. But I uh, wouldn't trade it for anything. You know, it's a journey. But I've learned that um, I, I can only be myself. And myself has to grow daily with Christ. Mm -hmm. Because if I try and be somebody else, it does not work. It, I, I can gain wisdom. Yeah. I can learn their good points, their bad points. And kind of sifted around, okay, God, is there something in for me, you know, what they're going through. And, but when I can be who I am and share um, my things, what I've walked through and how God has been faithful. I mean, people ask me all the time about um, my walk with God. And I said, the one thing I can say without any doubt at all that God is faithful. You know, sometimes I think he's a little late, <laughs> you know, <laughs> but uh, that's me again. But he, he's never failed us never ever failed us and i can walk 100 percent in confidence in that and and that just i think it's time you know that it just takes walking with him you know mm -hmm. being faithful to yeah. him yeah. you know um knowing that we won't always be 100 percent faithful because we're human beings mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. he is always faithful he's always faithful and joyce i love how you said i i can only be me and I, I feel like this is kind of what Jude is getting to, giving us two extremes in how to reach people. Mm -hmm. On some have compassion and on others, literally pull them out of the fire. I mean, those are two very different ends of the spectrum mm -hmm. of what evangelism looks like, what sharing your testimony looks like. And that can only come through you being you. Mm -hmm. We cannot put anybody else's garment on. Yeah, it's a one size fits all, but once you put that garment on, it fits you perfectly. Mm -hmm. It's only gonna look good on you the way that it's supposed to look. So we have to be very discerning as to the opportunities that God gives us when we can talk to people, when, when people are open to receiving. What about you, Caitlin? Do you have any um, stories that you can share about how you've, um, you know, just spoken with people about Christ? Um, I'm not much of an evangelist, <laughs> but um, my garment looks more in the shape of an encourager. So it's not necessarily, um, I don't have a lot of gospel opportunity, but a lot of um, either people that are curious about Christ mm -hmm. or people that are already Christians that are just in a really um, deep place of hurt and discouragement. Yeah. Um, God brings me to a lot of people in in that kind of phase or season, and I just kind of do everything I can to just be a blank slate <laughs> and like mm -hmm. empty my mind and mm -hmm. let God just download what this person needs to hear mm -hmm. in that moment. Mm -hmm. And most of the time it's reaffirming who God is mm -hmm. and how good and faithful God is and how much He loves this person um, because a, a lot of times the people that I come in contact with that are going through these things, they've lost themselves. They've lost mm -hmm. their identity of who they are mm -hmm. as a child of God. They've forgotten how much God loves them. They've forgotten mm -hmm. how faithful he is. They've forgotten what, at what great lengths he will go to for them. Mm -hmm. And um, it's a lot of that, that live the enemy of, I'm not worthy. I made too many mistakes in my life. God's not going to give me this blessing my life's going downhill. It's just going to keep going downhill from there. And um, so a, a lot of that, uh, yeah. just reaffirming for people or those that are curious about Jesus. I do get those rare occasions <laughs> of just, you know, and 
it's always people that have this preconceived notion of God and the church, mm -hmm. and it's mm -hmm. always a bad preconceived notion, <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> of you're an extreme rightist and you hate everyone that doesn't believe what you believe. And um, every once in a while I come across people like that. And if it's the right, like you said, you have to discern what kind of people you can talk to and not talk mm -hmm. to. Um, on the rare occasion that I actually can speak to somebody that's like that, it's able to just show the love of God to them, not have a debate, but just be the light of Christ in their life. And that opens up that conversation of being able yeah. to say, see, this, this is who my God is. This yeah. is my God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And, um, and I've gotten responses of like, you're the most liberal Christian I've ever met <laughs> or or like wow you're so different from the church and it's like I'm not the church but the church I go to is fantastic mm -hmm, and there's more mm -hmm. of us out there you just haven't met them so like it's a wide variety <laughs> it's a <interesting. laughs> variety of opportunities for sure <laughs> it's interesting you say that I have been told that as well like you're the most liberal Christ Christian I've ever met and it's okay one we are supposed to be free in Christ no, that doesn't mean we go around sinning, but being liberal, we, we have joy. We have different means to, to share with people. This is, this is what Jude is talking about, a, allowing our, who we are to come through in what God has done for us. And, and at the same time, I, I totally agree with what you just said, you know, being, being an empty vessel, you, anything that's going to come out of you is going to pour out of the character of Caitlin. So even though you might be empty, letting God fill you up with that wisdom, it's still going to come through the personality of Caitlin. You know, there, there is just, please understand that if you love God, if you have a heart that purely wants to, to serve Him, there, there's that law, that spiritual law of seed time and harvest. You know, what we plant in the spirit, it's going to grow in the spirit. So you might not feel ultra spiritual talking to somebody, but if your intent and your motivation is purely to glorify God, that seed is going to grow, whether you see it grow up or not. Because like the Bible says, one heart, one plants, one waters, but God gives the increase. So if we're letting that spiritual law of seed time and harvest really work, we may not ever see that harvest not until we get you know get into heaven and, and get to see what what those prayers and what those acts of faith really did and be okay with that you know god god knows god knows what he is he is growing through each and every one of us um we're we're almost done here um so you know it, it's such a privilege to to co-labor with god isn't it ladies i mean it really is it gives us such a joy um, I'm going to read 2 Timothy 4, uh, verses 2 and 5 here. Okay. Because I, what I really want to do in this moment is just to, to leave you, we want to leave you with an encouragement about, about who you are in the kingdom. Okay. So again, Paul is talking to Timothy here. He says, preach the word, be ready in and out of season. Convince, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and teaching for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but according to their own desires, because they have itching ears, they will heap up for themselves teachers and they will turn their ears away from the truth and be turned aside to fables. But you be watchful in all things, okay? Endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist and fulfill your ministry. Okay, Paul was talking expressly to Timothy here, do the work of an evangelist. But let's, let's just kind of wipe that out for a second, the word evangelist. But you, beloved, be watchful in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of the encourager. Do the work <laughs> right? of the intercessor. Do the work of the teacher. Do the work that God has called you to do. Because we have been told again and again and again through Jude and through these other texts that verify what we're, we're talking about here, that there is gonna, there's that time that people will not endure sound doctrine. The time is here. The time has already been here. Joyce talked about in the last session, she talked about um, 
there being waves of uh, strategies of Satan, okay? He, that there are times and seasons where he'll just throw something new in and if we're, not, if we're not discerning and if we're not ready, if we're not prepared, if we don't have our armor on, our garment of salvation on, we can easily just get swayed in, in the current or the flow of whatever is going on. So right now we're learning how to stand firm and to hold fast to our faith. And uh, please do the work that God has called you to do so that you can fulfill your ministry. You are a capable minister of God. Um, and so just to make sure that you know and believe that, I'm just going to go to a, one last verse here so you can see it again for yourself. Okay, so 2 Corinthians 3, um, 4 through 6. I will read that to you. And we have such trust through Christ our God, not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think of anything as being of ourselves or from ourselves, but our sufficiency is from God, who also made us sufficient as ministers of the new covenant, not of the letter, but of the spirit, the pneuma. For the letter kills, but the spirit, the breath of God, gives life. You have been empowered by the breath of God to be a capable minister in your sphere of influence, wherever you are, wherever you work, wherever you serve, you have the breath of God available to you. So right now we just want to pray over you and to believe that God is breathing in a, a fresh new breath of air into your life. Okay, so let's do that. Heavenly Father, I just thank you so much. I thank you that uh, we have the, the capability to, to bring in that breath of air that you just breathe on us. And so right now, Father, I ask in Jesus' name for every woman that is listening to this study, that is watching this study, God, that you would breathe into them a fresh new breath, God, that you would rejuvenate them, that you would revive them, that you would just cause them to have all passion for the things that you've called them to do. And God, I just thank you again for this opportunity, and I pray in Jesus' name that you would receive the fruit, God, that you would grow a harvest of women who are going to stand mighty uh, in this time, in this day and age in which we live, God. You are just going to allow us to understand who we are, royalty in your kingdom. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, ladies. So again, if you would like to just comment or let us know how you're doing with the study, we would love to hear from you. And uh, we will see you for the last time. We'll see you next week.